To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello, my dear students. So today I am going to continue the extra questions related to current electricity. We discussed the lesson in that you all can remember we discussed what static electricity and current electricity are. And thereafter we discussed current electricity in detail where we discussed the different quantities. Electromotive force, potential energy, current, resistance and then we do discuss the relationship between potential energy and current at constant temperature which is known as the Ohm's law. And from that we receive the constant that is the ratio between potential energy and current at constant temperature gives rise to a constant that is the resistance, resistance of a conductor. The force or the ability of a conductor to prevent the flow of current. Opposing force, opposingness exerted by the conductor against the flow of current. And you all know this resistance is measured at a certain temperature. When the temperature changes also the resistance changes. When ch temperature increases the resistance increases. At the same time the resistance of a conductor depends on three other factors. What are they? The material of the conductor, the length of the conductor and the cross-sectional area of the conductor. Thereafter we saw how we can connect resistors in series combination and parallel combination and the method of calculating the equivalent resistor. So those are the contents of the lesson. We discussed a lot of extra questions and here I have a few more extra questions. So extra question 27. A teacher provided the following materials to a group of students. So the materials are given to you, nichrome wire coil. So when we say nichrome wire coil, you all know students. Nichrome is a, an alloy. It is made up of nickel and chromium. And as a conductor, it has very high resistance. So because of that, what happens? There is lot of heat produced when current flows through nichrome. So nichrome is usually used in electric appliances where heat needs to be generated. So you are familiar with that. Nichrome wire coil. Then a voltmeter. Voltmeter to measure the potential difference voltage across two different points or between two points. Then an ammeter to measure the current. A rheostat you know is a variable resistor. There are different types of resistors. Rheostat since it's a variable resistor we can change the resistance during the activity itself. Then four dry cells. Now dry cells are the power source. So they provide the potential difference. Then connecting wires and a switch. So connecting wires to make the circuit and the switch to turn on and off the circuit. So there, those are the materials provided to the students. Then the circuit arranged by the students to investigate the relationship between the current passing through a conductor and the potential difference across the conductor is shown in the diagram. So when they say current passing through the conductor and the potential difference, automatically you all will understand what this is related. This is related to the Ohm's law. So if we look at the diagram, now here you can see the diagram students. Here is the nichrome coil. So that is the nichrome coil. Then we have the voltmeter connected parallel to the nichrome coil. So that means we are going to measure the potential difference between these two points that is across the nichrome coil. Then there is the point X and Y. There is no device so we might have to connect another device there. Then you can see the conducting wires. Then this is the rheostat. You can see from the circuit symbol you all can identify the components. A variable resistor so here it is the rheostat. Then we have the switch and the dry cells there. The circuit is complete. So in addition to that you can see in the list we have an ammeter. 
So most likely we will need to have the ammeter here so that we can measure the current flow through this nichrome coil. You all know that because here we are going to read the current flow and the potential difference and we are going to find the relationship. So that has to be between these two so that all the current that flows through the nichrome coil will flow through the ammeter as well. Is that clear student? So those are the information that you need to gather as you look at the diagram. Then you will understand the question. Then it's easy to answer the questions given to you. So that's the diagram. Then. So here this is the circuit. The first question. How are the dry cells connected to the circuits? How are the dry cells connected? The dry cells are connected in a series combination and that is anyway connected in the series combination. So always in order to increase the potential difference, you need to connect them in a series combination. If one dry cell has a potential difference of 1.5 volts, four batteries will give you four times 1.56 volts. So it is going to be a series combination. How are the dry cells connected in the circuit? Series combination. Then draw the circuit symbol of the instrument that needs to be connected between the points X and Y. So between X and Y, I already told you all the ammeter that is used to measure the current flow. So you all know the circuit symbol for that. Now if we draw the circuit, you need to have a circle like that. Then we have two lines. And here we you write the letter A, ammeter. So a circle and the capital letter A indicates ammeter. Draw the circuit symbol of the instrument that needs to be connected between the points X and Y. So we can draw it separately here. No need to draw it there because they have given space here. If they say draw it on the circuit or between X and Y, then you have to do it here. Otherwise you can write the, draw the circuit symbol below the question itself. So with that students, we'll move on to the next part of the question. Third one, why is a rheostat connected to the circuit? So like I said, you all are familiar with rheostats. They are variable resistors. What is the function of a resistor? Controls the current flow in the circuit. So by changing the resistance, you can control the current flow. So here, since we want to measure the potential difference and current, we need to get about five sets of readings. To do that, what do we need to do? We need to change the potential difference as well as the current flowing through the circuit. But here I have told you all students when we did the activity, when I explained the activity and even during questions, you all know that when we are trying to understand the relationship, we look at this component, the potential difference between the two ends of the nichrome coil and the current flowing through the nichrome coil. That is the relationship we are trying to observe. But here, since we have the rheostat, that controls the total current flow through the circuit as well as the potential difference across the circuit. So we are changing the resistance of the complete circuit, but the resistance of the nichrome coil does not change. That is what we will ultimately calculate or determine from this activity. So you have to remember that. We are changing the rheostat so that you can get five different or any number of readings. Normally we take five sets of readings for potential difference and current across the nichrome wire coil. That is the purpose of this activity. So that is what we need to write here. Why is a rheostat connected to the circuit? So we can say rheostat is used to change 
the resistance of the circuit so that more than one reading for potential difference and current ammeter can be obtained or in other words you can say so that the potential difference and current flow across the coil can be changed. I will write that in brackets. So here rheostat is used to change the resistance of the circuit so that more than one reading for volt meter and ammeter can be obtained. Or you can say so that the potential difference and current across the coil can be changed. So both give you the same meaning. You can either say we can get different readings for voltmeter and ammeter or you can say the potential difference and current across the coil can be varied by varying the value of rheostat. So I hope you all can understand these answers students. So then we look at the next one, fourth part. What will happen if the switch is kept closed for a long period of time in order to get correct readings? Again, you know this. Now the coil is nichrome. We discussed the property of nichrome. It has high resistance. So because of that, when current flows through the nichrome coil, there is heat generated. Now if heat is generated, the temperature of the nichrome coil will change. But you all know, for us to get the ratio between potential energy and current, the temperature has to be constant. Because from this activity, we have discussed the Ohm's law. So you all know for Ohm's law to be true or to get the relationship, do the calculation, the resistance, the temperature should be constant. So that is why we close the switch, quickly take the readings so that the coil does not become overheated or the temperature does not change. Then we switch it off, open the switch, allow the coil to cool down and then we go for the next set of readings. That's how we carry out the activity. So here to answer the question, what will happen if the switch is kept closed for a long period of time in order to cor get correct readings? Then the nichrome coil, the nichrome wire coil will become hot, hot and the temperature will change. So this is all you need to write for the question. But you know what will happen if the temperature changes. So here the question is what will happen if the switch is kept closed for a long period of time in order to get correct readings. They have not asked you to explain why the temperature changes or what will happen if the temperature changes. Only what will happen. So that gives this answer. The nichrome wire coil will become hot and the temperature will change. So then I'll move on to the next slide. The fifth part of the question. The graph plotted from the data obtained from the activity is shown here. What is the physical quantity calculated from the gradient of the plot? What is the physical quantity? Now here you can see the plot. Potential difference. 
current. So when you divide potential difference, what do you get? Resistance. That is something you all know. When you divide potential difference by current, you get a constant. And that constant is what we call as resistance. This constant is the resistance and given the symbol R. You all are familiar with this. From that only we get the equation V equals IR. So when we say gradient, how do we calculate the gradient? Gradient between Yn, it is between X and Yn X. So gradient M equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Difference between the two points of y and divided by the difference between the two points of x. So here y axis is potential difference, x axis is current. So that will give you the difference in potential difference divided by difference in current. So basically potential difference divided by current, you will get the resistance. That is how we get the value. So here to answer the question, what is the physical quantity calculated from the gradient of the plot? The physical quantity is resistance. That is what you need to answer here. So that is again the explanation. You need to write only the answer. Physical quantity is resistance. I am sure you all have answered all these correctly. So with that, I will move on to the next slide. Extra question 28. So first we will read the question, then we will look at the diagram. Two electric circuits are given below. So there are two circuits. They were connected to investigate the relationship given below. Current passing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. Again, the same relationship, relationship related to Ohm's law. Why? Again, it is the current and potential difference. So now we will look at the circuits given to us. Here you can see first circuit. Can you see? Again, if we start from here, there is the dry cell battery. Then that gives the potential difference. Then there is a variable resistor A that is connected to a another resistor there or it could be a coil but here the way it is shown the symbol circuit symbol shows it is a resistor resistor b and a device is connected a component is connected parallel to resistor b that is x so normally you all know if it is parallel connection and if it is to measure something it has to be the voltmeter then thereafter, Y is connected in series combination to B. So all the current that flows through B will flow through Y also. So that has to be current ammeter. So X has to be the voltmeter and Y has to be the ammeter that you all know. This is similar to the previous activity, activity to verify the Ohm's law. Then look at the second circuit. Now here also we have the same dry cell, one dry cell, then we have the variable resistor there. But here we have two resistors B and C. So what can you understand here? If you use a rheostat, a variable resistor, you can keep on changing the resistance and then you can find the current and potential difference across the particular component. But here they have used two resistors. Here it's one resistor. Here there are two resistors. So then what will happen? The resistance of this particular component here there is only one. Here there are two. The equivalence resistance between these two points will change. It will increase because they are connected in a series combination. So here if this is going to be R1, this is going to be R2 and obviously R2 will be greater than R1. Why? B and C are connected in a series manner. Then we measure the potential difference between the two ends of the 
of both the resistors together and the current flowing through both the resistors. So you all can understand the activity there now. Then if we look at the questions. First one, write the name of the law stated above. Write the name of the law stated above. That is the Ohm's law. So here of course, the full law is not given to you. Current passing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. There needs to be a condition satisfied. What is that? The temperature must remain constant. But here of course, they have given the relationship only. That is the Ohm's law. Second one. By what method is equipment X connected to the circuit? Equipment X. You all know it's the voltmeter and it is connected in a parallel combination. So parallel manner or parallel method or parallel combination. Anything is fine. As long as this term parallel is there, the answer is correct. Parallel combination, parallel manner or parallel method. Then name X and Y. We already understood what X and Y are. X is the voltmeter and Y is the ammeter. So X is connected in a parallel manner, voltmeter, ammeter is connected in a series manner. So those are the components X and Y. So with that students, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Fourth question, write the main functional difference between the components A and B. Now A is a variable resistor, B is a fixed value resistor. What is the difference? B only has one value for resistance, whereas in A you can change the value of resistance. So that is the difference. There we can say A resistance can be varied. B has a fixed resistance. Or you can say resistance cannot be or can't be varied. Resistance can't be varied. Since you are supposed to write the difference in A, the resistance can be varied. In B, resistance can't be varied or you can say it has a fixed resistance. I'm sure you all can understand that. Then, The fifth one, calculate the value of resistance B when the readings of X and Y are 4.5 and 3 respectively in the first circuit. So it's only the first circuit. What is X? X is the potential difference. So that means 4.5 volts. And Y is the ammeter. So it has to be 3 amperes. You all know the reading students. X is the voltmeter so potential difference and y is the ammeter current. We need to find the value of V. What is the equation we use? Equation related to Ohm's law. V equals IR and we can rearrange the equation. R is equal to V over I. Then if we substitute V is given to you 4.5 volts divided by current 3 amperes. So 4.5 divided by 3, 1.5 ohms. The resistance is going to be 1.5 ohms. Value of resistance of B when the readings of X and Y are 4.5 and 3 respectively. And they have said in the first circuit, use appropriate units for the values given. That is what I have done here. 
4.5 volts and 3 amperes. So when you use this equation, V equals IR, we rearrange R is equal to V over I. So that is equal to 4.5 volts divided by 3 amperes and that is equal to 1.5 ohm. And you all can also do this students, you can substitute directly here. 4.5 volts equals 3 amperes into R and then rearrange and divide and find the answer. Same thing done in a slightly different order. So either way you will get the answer as 1.5 ohms. That is the resistance of resistor P. Is that clear student? So then we will move on to the next slide. Extra question 29. So here again a diagram is given. Now look at the diagram properly. Now here you can see all the components are labeled. Now there is a voltmeter connected parallelly to a 10 ohm resistor. Then that is connected to a power supply and on this side you can see there is a rheostat. So that is a variable resistor and there is a milliammeter. Now ammeter you know to measure current in amperes, milliammeter to measure the current in milliamperes that is smaller units. So you get more uh, smaller currents, smaller values. So current is measured using the ammeter that is connected in a serial connection, series combination whereas here you can see voltmeter is connected in a parallel combination. So again you all can see since we have the voltmeter and the ammeter again the relationship. So Ohm's law. Now so far students from the start of this chapter I have discussed three questions all three related to Ohm's law the relationship between potential energy and current but the way the questions are given the way the components are connected in a circuit is different. But again to get the same relationship or do calculation related to the same relationship. So you all have to keep that in mind. We can have different types of circuits to observe the same relationship that is potential energy and current. So this is kind of a different setup. Then if we look at the question, the circuit designed to prove Ohm, Ohm's law is shown here. So here they have directly mentioned the circuit designed to prove Ohm's law is shown here. First question, explain the relationship between the current and potential difference. So how do you explain it? At constant temperature, current is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across the conductor. So here we can say at constant temperature, temperature, the current flow through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference difference across the conductor. So that is the relationship. Explain the relationship between the current and potential difference. Here basically I have written the Ohm's law but that again gives the explanation. At constant temperature the current, the current flow through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across the conductor. So that is the relationship. V is proportional to I. If you want you can write that also. V is proportional to I. You can write this first and then you can give the explanation. Either way is fine. Then the second part 
Calculate the current flow through the fixed value resistor when the voltmeter shows a reading of 3 volts. So here we need to find the current. So to find the current, what is the relationship? V equals I R. So if you are to find current, you need to know the potential difference and resistance. Potential difference, the reading is given as 3 volts current I. Now you can remember in this circuit, here the resistance was given to you, 10 ohm. So we have that as well. So then, resistance is 10 ohm. So current I is equal to 3 volts divided by 10 ohms. That is going to be 0 0.3 amperes, a very small current. Now that is why they use the milliammeter. In a normal ammeter or if we have, if we set it to the ammeter value, 0 0.3 might be able, we might get confused or we may not be able to observe it clearly. But when you use the milliammeter, then it's more easier to get the reading. So that is why the milliammeter is connected there. So I'm sure you would have done this calculation and answer the question correctly. So with that, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So part three, what is the factor that should be kept constant during the activity Y? So what is the factor students? We are observing the Ohm's law. It has to be at constant temperature. What is the reason? When the temperature changes, now here we have the resistance 10 ohm. When temperature changes, the resistance will change. Normally when temperature increases, the resistance of conductors increases. So that is why to prevent that we need to have the temperature constant. So the question is, what is the factor that should be kept constant during the activity? Temperature and why? Because resistance changes when temperature changes. So for conductors, the resistance increases when temperature is increased. That is what you need to understand. So the factor that needs to be maintained constant is temperature and because resistance changes when temperature changes. Then the next one. Okay, so here Draw the above circuits using standard symbols that you can do. We have the resistance. So here we need to have a fixed value resistor. Then we need to have the ammeter between these two points. Then we need to have the rheostat between those two points. And then on this side we have the power supply. And also, now fixed value resistor students, you all can use two different symbols. They, are, they have used the 10 ohm, the normal 10 ohm resistor. So I'm using this rectangle or you can use the zigzag shape and but you have to write the value there. You have to indicate it there. So between these two points is going to be the potential difference. And we need to have the variable resistor. And here we have the milliammeter. So since it is milliammeter, you have to put the simple M in front, milliammeter. The or you can 
so it has ammeter there because it is the ammeter and here if you want you can denote it as milli ammeter here so because you are using the scale milli amperes there then this is a 10 ohm resistor and you all can remember there is this potential meter voltmeter is there that is parallel to the 10 ohm resistor so we need to show that as well we need to have this voltmeter here so that is the circuit diagram here you can see potential difference or we can see power supply because in the diagram they have shown it as power supply and this is a rheostat so now we have the complete circuit we have the rheostat variable resistor symbol then ammeter ammeter symbol then the symbol for a fixed value resistor this one or like this without the arrow you can draw the symbol then the symbol for voltmeter which is connected parallel to this resistor then the potential difference between the two points so since they have in the diagram they have marked the negative and positive terminals that also can be marked negative and positive terminals so that gives you a complete diagram so now you all can understand this is similar to the circuit diagram we used to verify the Ohm's law. Is that clear now? So I am sure you also drew a correct diagram similar to this. So with that students, I will move on to the next question. Extra question 30. Now here also they have given a circuit diagram consider the circuit given below b1 b2 and b3 are filament bulbs and a1 a2 and a3 are ammeter so we look at the circuit first here you can see battery is there 12 volt power supply then there is a switch and the points a and b a b c d e f are marked there then you can see starting from the positive terminal here we have b1 with a resistance of 4 ohms and at point e the connection the circuit divides into two where you have a2 and a3 two ammeters a2 is in series connection with b2 bulb 2 filament two, filament bulb 2 and that also has a resistance of 4 ohms whereas a3 ammeter a3 is in series connection with B3 bulb 3 that also with a resistance of 4 O. Then both of the connections are joined together at point D and it proceeds to point C and there from there you can see ammeter 1 and B here again back to the power supply. So this is a circuit where you have two bulbs that are parallel to each other B2 and B3 and this full component between E and D is in series connection to bulb 1. All the bulbs have the same resistance 4 ohm and also there are three ammeters. So you can see ammeter A1 measures the current flow through the circuit as well as the current flow through B1. Then if you take A2 that will only measure the current flow through B2 because that is in series combination to B2 whereas ammeter 3 will measure the current flow through B3 that is how the ammeters are connected. Now of course the switch is open so if you close the switch current will flow the bulbs will light but based on the way they are connected and depending on the current flow the brightness of the bulb will be different that is what you need to understand here you all know the potential difference between f and e will be a, a value a certain value and between e and d will be a different value and that will depend on the equivalence resistor now here f and e is 4 ohms but you need to calculate the equivalent resistance between d and e that 
will be lesser than 4 ohms. Because you all know students, we have discussed this in detail. When two resistors are connected parallelly, here they are filament bulbs with resistance, they are in parallel connection. The equivalent resistance decreases. And I have told you all, I have explained this to you all before. Since both of them are equal resistance, equal values, and there are two bulbs. So what will happen to the resistance, equivalent resistance? You all can get the idea. The equivalent resistance becomes half. So that is 4 divided by 2, it will be 2 ohms. So here it is 4 ohm. The equivalent resistance is 2 ohm means accordingly the potential difference will be divided. More potential difference for bulb 1 and less potential difference for bulb 2. But at this point, point E, current will divide. All the current will flow through B1 but half the current will go through B2 and half the current will go through B3. So that means the brightness of bulbs B2 and B3 will be less than the brightness of bulb B1. And also, since B2 and B3 have the same resistance, same potential difference, the brightness of B2 and B3 will be the same. That is how the circuit will work when you close the switch. Is that clear, students? So you have to understand that first in order to answer the questions. So with that understanding, we look at the questions. Answer the questions related to the circuit when the switch is closed. So there. First one, calculate the equivalence resistance of the above circuit. So to do that, what do we do? Here, if I put the equivalence resistance of this as R dash, so 1 over R dash is equal to 4 ohms. So 1 over 4 ohms plus 1 over 4 ohms. That is going to be 2 over 4 ohms. So therefore you will get R dash as 4 divided by 2 that is 2 ohms. Then if we take the equivalence resistance, what is that? B1, that is 4 ohms, plus R dash, that is 2 ohms. So that the total equivalent resistance is going to be 6 ohms. Or the equivalence resistance of the above circuit is going to be 6 ohms. So here students calculate the equivalent resistance. It has to be equivalent resistance. Calculate the equivalent resistance of the above circuit. So then, what is the current flow through the circuit? We need to find the current flow through the circuit. For that, what do we need? We need the potential difference, 12 volts. We need the resistance, 6 ohms. So we can use the equation V equals IR, Ohm's law, and I, we can substitute 12 volts equals I into 6 Ohm. So I will be equal to 12 divided by 6, that is 2 amperes. That is the current flow through the circuit. What is the current flow through the circuit? Now these two questions students, I'm sure you would have done them. Now 1 over R dash, why? Because I took the equivalent resistance of this component between E and D as R dash. So that is those two are, the bulb 2 and 3 are in parallel connection. So 1 over R1 plus 1 over, here it will be 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, that is 2 over 4 ohms. Then you take the reciprocal. So R dash is equal to 4 divided by 2. That gives you a value of 2 ohms. Then to calculate the equivalent resistance of the circuit, R is equal to 4 ohm plus 2 ohm. That is equal to 6 ohm. And always remember students, sometimes they give it in the question, even if it is not specified. 
you all have to understand that we neglect the resistance of all these wires and the rest of the components. So by neglecting those values only they are negligible. We consider them as negligible. That is why we only consider the main components there. Then the current flow, what is the current flow through the circuit? Potential difference is given as 12 volts and the resistance, equivalent resistance is 6 ohms. Therefore, V equals IR, 12 volts is equal to I into 6 ohms. So, I is equal to 6 over 12, 2 amperes. Here again, I always mention the second method. You can rearrange and substitute also. That is up to your. You can use one of the two methods. So with that, I'm going to move on to the next part of the question, students. What is the current flow through bulb 3? B3. So to calculate the current flow through bulb 3, first we need to know the potential difference across bulb 3. So if we calculate the potential difference across bulb 1, across V1 that is equal to V equals IR that is equal to current we calculated 2 amperes and 4 ohms. So that is going to be 8 volts. So if 8 volts go for this one, 8 volts, 12 minus 8 volts for this one, that will be 4 volts or you can consider the ratio. There are different methods students. So there we will get the potential difference. How do we get the potential difference? Here it is 4 ohms. Here the equivalent resistance is 2 ohms. 4 is to 2 is 2 is to 1. So if you divide 12 by 3 it's 4. 2 is to 1. 1 is 4 volts. So across potential difference across B3 that is equal to 12 minus 8 volts 4 volts. That is how we can calculate. So what is the current flow through bulb B3? So current flow is what? I equals V over R. What is the potential difference? 4 volts. What is the resistance there? 4 ohms. It is only this resistance, bulb B3, that is 4 ohms. So here 4 volts divided by 4 ohms, the current is going to be 1 ampere. You can do this way or you can even say, now here we calculated the current 2 amperes. At this point, we calculated the current 2 amperes. So, because of that, you can see at this point, the resistance is equal, potential difference is equal. Therefore, the current will divide into half. That way also you can calculate the current. So, this is one way of doing the calculation using the Ohm's law. Otherwise, you can write it in a different way. I will write it here. So here you all can understand students. Between E and D. V is the same. Why? Because they are parallel connection. Parallelly combined. Parallel combination. I am writing everything in a short manner. This is for you all to understand. So it's a parallel combination and resistance that also V2 equals V3. So therefore current divides equally at point E. 
So from that also you can easily calculate. Here we can say 2 amperes divided by 2, 1 ampere. That is also a quick way to look at the circuit and get the answer. But here of course I have done the calculation. I am sure you all can understand both the methods. So like I told your students if it is for an MCQ you don't have to show the working you can directly use this method. But if you are to show the calculation it is better to go for this particular method or you have to write the explanation as well. So up to you all. So in this method what I have done is I have calculated the potential difference across B1 between the points of B1. And then we found the potential difference between E and D. From that I have calculated the current flow 1 ampere. That is for this particular question. Then fourth one comment on the brightness of the bulbs. So to comment on the brightness of the bulbs like I told you all now that we have calculated you have a better understanding through bulb 1, bulb 1 current flow is 2 amperes. Bulb 2 and bulb 3 the current flow is only 1 ampere. So what will be the brightness? B2 and B3 will have equal brightness but the brightness of B1 will be more than B2 and B3. So that is what you need to write here. B2 and B3 will be of equal brightness or you can say brightness of B2 and B3 will be the same. B1 will have more brightness than B2 and B3. So that is how you commit. You have to say that B2 and B3 have the same brightness whereas B1 is more brighter than B2 and B3. So that is how you comment on the brightness. Is that clear to you also that? So early also we have done these type of calculations where we looked at the combination of resistors. We calculated equivalent resistor, equivalent resistance. But in this question, instead of resistors, we have filament bulbs as resistors. Filament bulbs with a certain resistance. So because of that, you can calculate the equivalent resistance as well as you can observe the brightness of bulbs. That is an additional thing you can get from this type of circuit. Is that clear student? So with that, I'll move on to the next slide. So the fifth one, what will happen to the brightness of the bulbs B1 and B2 if bulb B3 is not working? So here what they say is, this is not working. So if that doesn't work, what will happen to the circuit? Now look at the circuit. Between these two parts, you will have B1. Then we will have the ammeter and we'll, we will have B2. But this will become like a continuous circuit. So B1 is there, A2 is there and we have this. This is the ammeter, this is bulb 1 and this is bulb 2. Now B3 is not there. So the connection continues. What happens? B1 and B2 are connected in a series combination. B1 and B2 are connected 
in a series combination. So what will happen to the equivalent resistance now? You can just understand the value or if you want, you can calculate it. Now B1, 4 ohms. This is 4 ohms and this is also 4 ohms. Now since they are in a series combination, it becomes 4 ohms plus 4 ohms. So 8 ohms. What will happen to the current flow? That will decrease. Now current flow I equals V over R. V is the same 12 volts divided by resistance 8 ohms. 12 divided by 8, 1.5 amperes. Earlier you can remember students when we had these two connected parallelly. The equivalent resistance of the full circuit was only 6 ohms. In that one earlier it was 6 ohms. I will use a different value. You can remember the values. Here it was 6 ohms and the current flow was 2 amperes when all 3 bulbs were there. Although B2 and B3 the current flow was less, the total current was 2 amperes. But now the total current has become 1.5 amperes. But you can remember, through B1 it was 2 amperes, through B2 it was only 1 ampere in the previous instant. But now through B1 it has decreased to 1.5 amperes, but B2 the current has increased to 1.5 amperes. So what will happen to the brightness? Brightness of B1 will be less than the previous instance. Brightness of B2 will be more than the previous instance. And now both B1 and B2 will have the same brightness. That is what you need to understand. Is that clear to you also? That? So if we look at the question again, what will happen to the brightness of the bulbs B1 and B2 if bulb B3 is not working? So you have to write the answer for this question. For that only I gave you all, all the explanation. So here we will write the answer as B1 and B2 will have the same brightness also we have to say B1 will be less brighter than B4. B2 will be more brighter than before. Why? They have said what will happen to the brightness. So you have to give all the information. One thing, earlier B1 was more brighter than B2 and B3. B2 and B3 had equal brightness. But now B1 and B2 will have the same brightness. That is one. And at the same time, B1 will be less brighter than before. Earlier 2 amperes, now 1.5 amperes. So less brightness. And at the same time, B2 will be more brighter than before. Why? Earlier through B2, it was only 1 ampere. Now it is 1.5 ampere. So the brightness will be more. You have to give all these changes. Again to look at what happens. Now we had the normal circuit where the equivalent resistance was 6 ohms, current was 2 amperes and you can remember through this the current was only 
1 ampere through this also it was 1 ampere here through this it was 2 amperes the total current but once b3 is not there what happens b1 and b2 become series combination so b1 and b2 are connected in a series combination if b3 is not working then of course what happens because of that the resistance equivalent resistance changes r is the equivalent resistance now so here 4 ohms and 4 ohms 4 ohm plus 4 ohms it becomes 8 ohms when you calculate the current potential difference is 12 volts equivalent resistance is 8 ohm current becomes 1.5 ampere so the current decreases the total current flowing through the circuit decreases but the same current flows through b1 and b2 so it is going to be the same current b1 and b2 current is now 1.5 amperes so less current but the same current so that is why b1 and b2 will have the same brightness but because earlier it was 2 amperes and now 1.5 ampere brightness of b1 will be less than the previous instance but if you take b2 earlier it was 1 ampere now it is 1.5 amperes so the brightness of b2 will be slightly greater that is how the change takes place i'm sure you all can understand that clearly so with that students i will move on to the next slide that is extra question 21 the last question for this chapter first one write the equation for ohm's law so if you are to write the equation for ohm's law v equals i r at the same time there you can see again a circuit you are very familiar with this circuit now you can see the nichrome wire coil and then device connected component x you all know it has to be the voltmeter then the circuit here you have z you can see a variable resistor so usually it's a rheostat then the 6 volt power supply the switch and y will be the ammeter so it is obvious this is an activity a setup or a circuit connected to observe the relationship between potential energy and current that is the ohm's law so there we have the circuit then if we look at the next question identify the components x and y what is x there x is the voltmeter voltmeter and y is the m meter so we have answered similar questions we have now in this chapter we have looked at so many questions which are related to ohm's law or the activity that was carried out to understand the relationship between potential energy and current but like i told you the way the circuit is connected and also the questions given they are different from each other that is why I have included all these questions. So here we identify components X and Y. With that, I'll move on to the next part. Third one, what is component Z and what is the function of Z? What is component Z? It is a variable resistor, a rheostat. So here we have to say rheostat within brackets I will say variable resistor because the symbol is for variable resistors but we know it is a rheostat what is the function of that can change the resistance by doing that can control the current flow through the circuit resistance can be varied therefore current flow and potential difference difference 
across the nichrome coil can be varied. That is what we do here. So, it is a rheostat that is a variable resistor. The resistance can be varied. Therefore, current flow and potential difference across the nichrome coil can be varied. That is what we need from this activity. Changing the current flow and potential difference and measuring the values. Then the fourth one. What characteristic of nichrome coil makes it useful in this activity? What characteristic makes it useful? It has a high resistance. It is a conductor with high resistance. So here it is a conductor with high resistance. So, it allows current, different values of current and different potential difference, a range of potential difference and current to flow through the coil. So, because it has a high resistance and this resistance you remember always depends on temperature. Since it has high resistance, when current flows, the temperature can vary quickly. That is why we have to take the readings very quickly and turn off the or open the circuit and allow the coil to cool down so that we make sure that the temperature of the coil does not change. So that is what we have here. With that students, I'm going, going to move on to the next slide. Then fifth part, this is the last part of the question. Calculate the resistance of the nichrome coil from the readings of X and Y given in the table below. So, from the circuit you all know X is the voltmeter. So, here if you look at reading of X that is the voltmeter reading and Y is the ammeter. So, ammeter reading is given here. Amperes and potential difference. And here students. You all know the way to do the calculation and here you have to remember we can do the calculation or we can find the value of resistance in two ways. One thing we can calculate the ratio between the values. You will see all the values are the same or else we can plot the graph and get the gradient. I will do both the methods. You can follow one of the method or else depending on how they specifically ask in the question you have to use one of the methods. So, if we are going to calculate, how do we calculate? We need to find resistance. You all know the relationship V equals IR. So, from that if you are to find R, it is going to be V over I. That is what we say, you know, the current flow through a conductor is proportional, directly proportional to the potential difference. We calculate R using the equation V divided by I. So, V divided by I, here it is going to be 6 divided by 0 0.3. So, if you divide that, it will be 20 ohms. Same thing for the second one. 0 0.4 amperes, 8 volts. So, 8 divided by 0 0.4, that also will give you 20 amperes. The third set of values, 10 volts divided by 0 0.5 amperes that also will give you 20 ohms. So, all the calculations give you the same value that is how we did the activity. So, you know the resistance is 20 ohms. So, resistance equals 20 ohms. We have calculated the resistance. That is one method. The other method Method 2, let's say, what can we do? We can plot. We can have potential difference and current. So, now that I have the two axes, we have to calibrate the axis. 
So you can do this with the ruler. So I have the ruler here just to mark the points. So one scale. We only have three values here. So here also we need three points. Right. So I have current reading 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and 0 0.5. That is current amperes. You can even write I amperes. And here I have voltage in volts that is 6, 8 and 10. Then what do we do? We use the broken lines. To mark the points. So if you connect all the points here, you will get a straight line. That is the graph. Then what do we do? We calculate gradient. Gradient m equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So here we'll take the two extreme points, these two points. So y2 is 10 minus 6 divided by x2 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3. So you will get the value as 4 over 0 0.2 and if you calculate again you will get it as 20 ohms. So for this question students we don't have to really go for the graph but if you are given the data asked to plot the graph and asked to calculate the resistance you should know this second method. That is the purpose of getting more than one readings to make sure we have an accurate value because you all know when we take more readings the activity becomes more accurate more sets of readings give a more accurate calculation so that is what we have done here so the first method directly you calculate r equals v o i we got the resistance as 20 ohms at the same time you can use the second method where you plot potential difference in the y-axis, current in the x-axis. You mark the points and draw the graph and then you calculate the gradient. Gradient gives you the resistance. So that is also 20 ohms. Either way, you can calculate the resistance. So I'm sure students, with that, you all have a good understanding about this lesson and you all know to answer different types of questions. And as I said, although it's the Ohm's law, that is the law we discuss here and we did the activity, the same activity can be modified in different ways to give you different types of questions. But as long as you understand the basic concept, you can answer any type of question. So with that students, I have come to the end of this chapter and the lesson. We discussed current electricity and I have discussed all the questions from your textbook. In addition to that, so many extra questions. So with that, I'm sure you will be competent enough to answer different types of questions related to current electricity. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.